Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today you can see that I'm streamside in the Appalachian Mountains in mid-January just after a snowfall. Today's episode is going to be about riparian habitats, riparian buffers, and I'm going to compare riparian zones here in the U.S. in the Appalachian Mountains with those in Kenya. And you say, Kenya? How am I going to get to Kenya? Well, one of the really great benefits for me personally, and the most rewarding part of having this channel and sharing, is getting to meet people around the world. And I got to meet Victor Matuga, who lives in Kenya. And he, like me, is concerned with education and water quality and biodiversity and people. And we just really hit it off. So in this episode, I'm going to explain exactly what are riparian habitats, all the different ways that they're important, and compare the Appalachian concerns and protection of water resources and riparian habitats with those in Kenya, thanks to my friend Victor. So stay tuned. I think you're going to like this episode. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So the riparian ecological zone is a habitat, a transition between the terrestrial environment and the aquatic environment. It's a dynamic zone of great biodiversity and nutrient transfer and energy transfer as well. It often harbors unique organisms that are adapted to this environment, especially the aquatic part and move up and down these aquatic terrestrial corridors. They are important, if not critical, habitats to wildlife, biodiversity, human health, and ecosystems. Riparian zones and the vegetation they harbor protect streams and water quality from erosion and stormwater runoff. They mitigate all of those things. While slowing runoff and intercepting eroded materials in that runoff, it also intercepts pesticides and nutrients like nitrates and phosphates. And these nutrients are absorbed by the plants and the leaf litter associated with it. The shade provided by riparian vegetation decreases water temperature and reduces evaporation and together improves water quality. Riparian vegetation, because it slows the movement of the water and also increases absorption, it helps recharge groundwater and also helps protect the associated wetlands. So the riparian zone is a critical, critical part of the ecology of streams, rivers, and watersheds as a whole. Protecting water quality and water resources is a worldwide concern. Here in Virginia, in the Appalachian Mountains, forested land was clear cut for crops and cattle, leaving streams unprotected and impacting water quality throughout the entire watershed. Cattle with free access trample fragile habitat and increase erosion, sedimentation, and excrement is freely carried into the stream by runoff and by direct delivery. Locally, these streams feed into the Little River and then the New River, where downstream communities will access this water for drinking water and both commercial, industrial, and public use. The more sediment, the more nutrients, bacteria, and algae, the lower the quality of the water and the higher the cost of purification. There are continued efforts here to restore riparian zones called riparian buffers in Virginia and in the greater Chesapeake Bay watershed. Incentives are provided with grants and tax incentives to encourage farmers to increase the riparian zones on their places. A riparian buffer is a swath of land on both sides of a stream created by fencing cattle or exclusion fencing and natural regrowth of plants and trees. 
Water from streams is then piped to water troughs for cattle, and it's been documented to improve health and productivity. Replanting riparian vegetation and or using exclusion fencing reduces erosion, stabilizes the stream banks, reduces runoff, absorbs nutrients and nitrates and phosphates and all the other myriad of benefits of riparian habitats. So I thought it'd be fascinating to compare water quality conservation issues here with those in Kenya. Through my channel, I had the privilege to meet Victor, who is the organizer of a project in Kenya that works on water conservation. So first, let's have Victor introduce himself. I'm Victor Mutukumutunga, the founder and executive director of Soil, Water and Environmental Conservation Foundation. This is a community-based organization. We are based in a place called Mwingi Town, Kenya. So as we talk, I was fascinated by the challenges presented with riparian habitats and water conservation in these semi-arid communities. I actually have a master's degree in zoology where I emphasize aquatic ecology and environmental impact assessment. So everything that they're doing there are things that I've been concerned about here. Soil, Water and Environmental Conservation Foundation works with great partnership with communities living in semi-arid lands, Kenya. We formed this organization after discovering that communities living in semi-arid lands in Kenya, that they have big problem of water scarcity, and uh, this is due to climate change. So Victor's Soil, Water, and Environmental Conservation Foundation is involved in many different projects in order to help the local economy, environment, people, and the nature of Kenya. We started implementing soil mechanism projects, water projects, and environmental conservation programs to our rural communities living in semi-arid lands. One of his projects involves planting trees, and he does this through school and community organizations. The trees he plants includes Cassia siamaya, a tree with medicinal value, leaves and buds that are edible and nutritious, and also valued as a hardwood for furniture making. It has an extensive root system that's great for soil and erosion control. Fruit trees, such as mango and pawpaw, which the rest of the world recognizes as papaya, are planted for the production of the fruit that children can eat, and gather, and even sell. Finally, the moringa tree is a planted as an agroforestry tree for food and profit and medicine. Its leaves and seeds are rich in iron, protein, and other nutrients. And this tree also has many important medicinal qualities. 70% of the communities in this area are affected by high blood pressure and hypertension. And the people lack access to proper medical care. So extracts from this plant are known to lower blood pressure. The Moringa tree is highly regarded locally for its many other medicinal qualities as well. So this is a really important tree to plant. All of these trees are selected for their documented ability to thrive in this environment. A place where walking five miles daily to access water is routine for so many families. So you can see that both Victor and I are trying to educate people and communities about the environment and protecting an environment. And you can see how important riparian zones and riparian buffers are to where he is in Kenya for protection of soil and water and water quality for communities. So you can actually help Victor if you're interested by donating to his project through the Seeds of Life Foundation. So if you go to the description of this YouTube video and scroll down, you'll find all the information you need to donate to this nonprofit organization and help plant trees, retain soil, help the local economy, help people uh, live better, eat better, and create some agroforestry opportunities 
through riparian habitat and riparian buffer zone restoration. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I'm back down in the riparian zone along this creek, just thinking about what a contrast this is, especially today with Kenya and the Appalachian Mountains. Both riparian habitats, both protect water quality, both have very, very different issues. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel and I hope you can donate something to my friend Victor's projects there in Kenya. Stay tuned, I got an episode coming up on sand dams in Kenya. Wait till you see this. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.